好，二零一五年嘅第六条题目系有关于细胞膜嘅科学探究。今次呢个 table 咧就概括咗四个唔同嘅时代啦，唔同嘅科学家对于细胞膜嘅研究同埋佢哋嘅一啲发现嘅。咁而家 part A 啦就问翻啦，一开始嘅呢两位科学家。佢哋對於細胞膜嘅探究，可以話到俾我哋聽，細胞膜嘅主要成分係乜嘢呢？咁我哋睇下佢有咩發現先啦。第一個啦，就係油溶性嘅物質係好容易穿過到個細胞；而第二呢，就係細胞膜嘅主要結構係能夠顯示到一個親水性同埋疏水性嘅特質。其實成條題目就係考緊我哋對於輪子嘅理解。而第二個技巧咧，就係有關於我哋點樣喺唔同嘅科學探究嘅發現入面去尋找一啲相似性。咁今次嘅題目咧都非常之直接噶啦，答案一定係輪子。咁啊，因為輪子咧就係有親水性嘅頭同埋疏水性嘅尾巴，而疏水性嘅尾巴咧就係容許到油溶性嘅物質容易穿過嘅原因啦。跟住去到 Part B 咧，我哋就睇下其他科學家對於細胞膜嘅探究有冇啲新嘅發現啦，從而就話俾我哋聽。呢、这個細胞膜嘅主要結構即係輪子啦，佢嘅細胞膜嘅定向同埋佢哋嘅排列係如何呢？咩叫定向啊？即係話啦，究竟喺呢個親水性嘅頭同埋疏水性嘅尾，究竟邊個向住出面，邊個向住入面呢？而擺放嘅話啦，究竟係單層定係雙層呢？跟住就解釋我哋嘅答案。咁啊，睇下佢哋有咩發現先啦。咁有兩個科學家呢，就將紅血球嘅細胞膜嘅脂肪成分抽取咗出嚟，然後再以一個單層嘅形式去分布喺個水嘅表面。咁我哋就發現呢一個單層嘅脂肪就等同於細胞膜嘅表面面積嘅兩倍。咁明明大家都係細胞膜嚟㗎嘛，點解我單一浸去擺，佢嘅面積竟然係比起一個正常嘅細胞膜嘅表面面積為之兩倍係多咗嘅呢？咁其實就係考緊我哋對於輪脂雙層嘅理解啦，尤其是佢擺喺一個水溶性嘅環境底下。咁當中啦，我哋就一定要留意返嘅就係水溶性嘅頭同埋疏水性嘅尾巴，究竟佢哋係點樣擺放咯？佢哋嘅定向喎。咁喺呢一個輪脂雙層，我哋就會發現呢，親水性嘅頭係對住出面。咩叫對住出面呢？如果擺返喺細胞膜嘅理解呢，就係細胞膜嘅。外面同埋入面，亦即係讲緊啦，组织液同埋細胞质。所以呢条题目呢，都係考緊我哋对于组织液同埋細胞质嘅主要成分嘅理解。其实都係水嚟嘅，都係一个溶液嘅状态。所以啦，喺个細胞嘅外面同埋入面，都係一啲水溶嘅状态。所以就只有轮脂亲水嘅部分呢，係会接触咗我哋嘅細胞液同埋細胞以外嘅液体，亦即係组织液啦。有到 Part C 咧，佢就问啦。其實呢啲科學家呢，佢哋嘅研究呢係有個盲點嘅，就係冇去提及到呢。原來細胞膜係有另一個嘅主要成分。咁究竟呢個成分係乜嘢呢？到 Part Two 咧，就係、是、要我哋用返流體雙陷模型去描述下細胞膜嘅另一個主要成分係如何擺位、如何定向嘅呢。所以成條題目呢，就係考返我哋嘅流體雙陷模型啦。我哋見得到輪脂雙層同埋蛋白質。咁所以唔難理解啦，呢一 p 嘅答案就係蛋白質嘅分子啦。咁去到第二部分咯，用返流體雙陷模型，又解釋下啲蛋白質點樣擺咯。其實蛋白質點樣擺法啊？佢一係呢，就係喺個細胞膜嘅表面，我唔理佢係外面嘅表面定係入面嘅表面，或者浸住咗半嚿，另外半嚿呢就露咗出嚟嘅。又或者啦，整個鋪天呢係穿過咗整個輪脂雙層又得。所以你可以講咧，蛋白質係分布喺、散布喺喺個輪脂雙層嘅不同嘅表面，而佢哋所分布嘅規律咧係不對稱，同埋係以一個雙陷式嘅模式咧去擺放佢嘅，亦即係頭先我所講嘅啦，擺喺細胞膜嘅表面啦，浸住一半啦，或者穿過咗成個輪脂雙層啦。咁有關於細胞膜嘅題目呢，就唔淨止長題嘅，其實呢 M C 都有好多，所以都睇返以前嘅 M C 片啦，去揾一揾書啦。哈斯嘅呢條題目有啲咩嘅變奏呢？佢啱啱問緊流體雙陷模型啊嘛，咁流體雙陷模型何為流體，何為雙陷呢？有冇得解釋下嘅呢？所以呢度呢，就考返大家。流体嘅呢个特性系源自于轮脂双层，系可以喺細胞膜左右移动；而双陷式嘅呢个特性咧，系基于蛋白质系分布喺、散布喺个轮脂双层嘅任何一个位置。呢啲蛋白质嘅分子咧，亦都可以随意喐动嘅。跟住啦，就去到 Part D， 就问翻科学本质啦。今次题目佢就讲嘅，科学家咧系常常用模型去解释佢哋嘅发现嘅。咁究竟佢哋呢个做法？
系点样符合咗科学嘅本质呢？咁第一个呢，就讲啦，科学系建基于证据所建立嘅，即係正正呢一句啦。科学知识系建基于同埋衍生于对自然世界嘅观察。今次唔同嘅科学家，佢哋对于細胞膜进行咗唔同嘅科学探究，佢哋发现咗細胞膜系有脂肪，而呢个脂肪系一个磷脂，有一个亲水性，有一个疏水性嘅特质。而呢个磷脂佢系以双层嘅模式。去擺放去定位，而之後佢哋就推出咗流體箱嘅模型，去解釋翻整個細胞膜嘅結構。無論你係雙層結構嘅模型，定抑或係流體箱嘅模型，都係建基於科學探究嘅結果觀察所得出嚟嘅，就唔係佢哋自己吹出嚟嘅。而第二個科學本質，佢就去講啦，科學家之所以利用模型。系因为佢哋想去模仿一啲你见唔到嘅结构，者系以图像去解说翻一个理论嘅。呢、这个科学本质正正就系讲紧创造力同埋幻想能力啦。你试幻想一下，只你有咗显微镜，再结合埋有关于細胞膜嘅结构，你点会估到佢系咁样摆法啊？你冇啲创造力，冇啲幻想能力嘅话，你系唔会幻想到头脚脚头嘅呢个结构嘅。而喺化学世界都有类似嘅例子嘅，就系、是、例如病先啦。本环呢一样嘢，点解我哋知道呢个 C 六 H 六嘅结构系一个环状嘅结构呢？当初啲科学家谂极都谂唔到嘅。我知道佢有六个碳，我知道佢有六个氢，但系点解佢系环状咧？谂极谂唔明，直至到有一日个科学家谂下谂下瞓着咗，佢瞌着嘅时候梦见咗一条蛇，条蛇就自己担住咗个尾巴，形成咗一个环状，然后佢就谂啦，病先就系一个环状嘅结构，听起上嚟好似好无稽。但系呢个就系科学嘅其中一个本质，我哋需要创意同埋幻想能力啦。关于科学本质嘅题目咧，年年都有噶啦。咁大家咧，真系不妨去睇下 M C 啦，或者长题目啦，可以温书咯噃。好，跟住啦，就嚟到一点出发啦。今次嘅题目咧，就以细胞膜做个切入点。第一啦，就梗系问下你结构、功能、适应性特征，尤其是系个细胞膜嘅差异渗透，关个蛋白质咩事咧？关个磷脂双层乜嘢事咧？又或者啦，喺个細胞膜嘅唔同蛋白质，佢哋嘅功能又如何呢？呢、这个大家系溫书溫得到返嚟，而喺过往嘅 M C 都有考到大家嘅。而另一个导向咧就系科学探究同埋科学嘅本质啦。咁你喺呢个例子你会发现啦，唔同科学家喺唔同时间对于細胞膜都进行唔同嘅研究，亦都有唔同嘅发现。当中佢哋发现得越嚟越多，其中一个原因就系有关于科技嘅进步，可能啦显微镜嘅出现啦。又或者探測唔同化學物質嘅一啲測試啦，都會幫到科學家嘅。而呢條題目咧，行多一步嘅咧，就係有關於建立模型啦。今次我哋講緊嘅係流體雙嵌模型。除咗建立模型之外啦，科學探究仲有冇咩嘅例子咧？例如啦，尋找規律啦，同埋分類。其实咧喺细胞膜呢一课咧，我哋都有得学分类嘅，就系、是、有啲咩嘅物质可以好容易穿过细胞膜，有啲咩物质系唔能够穿过细胞膜。例如啦，氧气二氧化碳佢哋好细粒，系可以好容易穿过细胞膜。咁系啦，葡萄糖咧佢就唔能够直接穿过呢个磷脂双层啦。咁啊，因为咧佢系亲水性，佢需要一啲 channel protein 啦或者 carrier protein 啦去帮佢运送过去个细胞膜嘅另一面嘅。Two one five question six is about cell membrane. So we can see that different scientists they did the scientific investigation to discover the structure of the cell membrane. For well, part A, it talks about the first two scientific investigation to tell us the major component of the cell membrane. So let's take a look at their findings. Lipid soluble substance could penetrate the cells easily, and the major component of the cell membrane exhibit both water loving and water hating properties. You see that part A is checking the concept about the structure of the phospholipid molecule. And also for the critical skills, we need to identify the similarity of the scientist's findings. So this question is very straightforward. According to the water loving and water hating property, we can recall the phospholipid molecules because there is the hydrophilic head and the hydrophobic tail. And for the hydrophobic tails, it can explain that why the lipid soluble substance could penetrate cells easily. And for part B, we take a look at other scientific investigation to suggest how these major components, phospholipid molecules, are oriented and arranged in the cell membrane, and explain our answer. So let's see what did they do and what did they observe. They extract the lipids from the cell membrane of the rubber cells and spread the lipids in a single layer on water surface. 
and they found that the area of the layer, this single layer of the lipid, was double the surface area of the cell membrane. Could it be we spread the single layer and the area is double the surface area of the cell membrane? What does it mean? It means that we need to recall the arrangement of the phospholipid bilayer in the aqueous environment. So you can see that in the cell membrane structure, technically is in the phospholipid bilayer, head, tail, tail, head, this arrangement. Also the orientation, that means the positioning. The hydrophobic tails points inwards, while the hydrophilic head face the aqueous environment inside and outside the cells. When we talk about the aqueous environment, we need to recall the main component of the tissue fluid and the cytoplasm. Outside the cell membrane is the tissue fluid, and inside the cell membrane is the cytoplasm. Both of these two media, they are the aqueous solution. Therefore, we need to mention that only the water-loving part of the phospholipid molecule is in contact with the cell cell, that means the cytoplasm, and extracellular fluid, that means the tissue fluid. And in part C, it asks about that those scientists, they did not mention another major component of the cell membrane. What is this component? And for the second part, with reference to the fluid mosaic model, we need to briefly describe the orientation of this component in the cell membrane. So first of all, we need to recall the arrangement of the phospholipid molecules and the protein molecules in the fluid mosaic model. So for part one, the answer is very straightforward. It, the other major component is the protein molecules. And what about the orientation of the protein molecules in the cell membrane? We know that the protein molecules, they are interposed among the phospholipid molecules in the mosaic model. It means that some proteins, they are attached to the surface of the phospholipid bilayer, no matter is the outer surface or the inner surface. Some of them are embedded halfway in the bilayer, and some of them span in the entire bilayer. Pass it to the orientation of the protein. Proteins are interspersed in the bilayer in an asymmetric manner or a mosaic pattern. And you can also talk about these three types of arrangement. And for the cell membrane topic, there are MC and the long question for you to do the revision. And what about for part C? Any possible question variation? In part C, the main focus is the fluid mosaic model. It can ask you to explain the nature of the fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane. How do we describe the cell membrane as fluid and mosaic? The nature of fluidity is because the phospholipid molecules can move laterally in the cell membrane. And the cell membrane is described as mosaic because the protein molecules are interspersed among the phospholipid molecules in a mosaic pattern. For part D is the question about the nature of science. It says that models are often used by the scientists to explain their findings. So how do this behavior show the particular aspect of the nature of science? First of all, science is evidence-based. It means that the scientific knowledge is based on and or derived from the observations of the natural world. So you can see that different scientists, they do different scientific investigation on the cell membrane and they have different findings and observations. And then we use the model to summarize all their findings. And what about the second nature of science? The elaboration is talking about models are used to simulate an invisible structure or use it as a diagram to explain the theory. Nature of science is doing science requires imagination and creativity. Imagine that even you have the microscope to observe the structure of the cell membrane and you have all the findings here. Lipid soluble substance could penetrate the cell easily and the major component of the phospholipid exhibit both water loving and water hating properties. So how can you draw this conclusion? Phospholipid bilayer and also the fluid mosaic model with the protein interspersed among the phospholipid bilayer. So you really need the imagination. There is a similar case in the chemistry stream. Scientists, they know that the chemical formula of benzene is C6H6. It contains carbon and hydrogen. But how are they arranged to form the benzene? They don't have idea. And one day, the scientists, they fall asleep and he make a dream. He dreams that a snake is biting his own tail. So this dream inspired the scientists to think that benzene is a ring structure. And apart from the long question, 
there are different types of MC question. Apart from this question, you can check the MC and the long question for the nature of science. Let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question starts from the cell membrane. Of course, we can talk about the structure, function, and adaptive features of the cell membrane. For example, the structure and function of the membrane protein. For example, the antigen, they are y shape or the structure. Why it is a Y shape? Because there are two hands to bind with the antigen. And for the whole cell membrane, we can recall the differential permeability. Why does the cell membrane show the differential permeability? How is it related to the phospholipid bilayer and also the protein molecule? For the second idea of this question is about scientific investigation and the nature of science. So you can see that many scientists, they can work together no matter at the same time or not. So they based on others' findings and continue their own scientific investigation to build up more and deeper discovery and understanding of the science world. And for this question, it also asks you about the model building. And apart from model building, there are different types of scientific investigation. For example, seeking the pattern and classification. Cell membrane topic, you can do the classification. For example, some molecules, they can pass through the cell membrane easily, and some of them, they are not. For example, oxygen, carbon dioxide, so they are so small, and then they can pass through the cell membrane easily. But what about the glucose? They cannot pass through the phospholipid bilayer, so we need some channel protein or carrier protein to carry the glucose across the cell membrane.